Hey guys! Now, I know it's been a while since I uploaded last time, like, over a year, but, um, I just sort of got busy with school, and making videos just sort of left me. It was my junior year, applying to colleges, and my senior year with COVID and all that, it's just been a little bit hectic, and I just haven't been able to upload as many, as any, as many videos as I would like to. But now I do want to keep uploading a little bit more consistently. I'll be going to college in like three weeks, so I don't know how much I can upload while I'm there. But I do genuinely like making videos for you guys, and as long as you keep enjoying them, I'll keep making them. So I'll try to be a little more consistent about that. And another thing is I currently don't have the equipment necessary to make videos on paper and pencil like I used to to the standard and quality that I want to make them at. Because I don't have the correct equipment, I will probably be making a lot more videos using my drawing tablet while I draw digitally. But I want to say this, all these videos I will do my best to make it accessible and make it as easy as it is to follow along with needing nothing more than a pencil, a paper, and an eraser. That's all you need to draw. You don't need any fancy drawing tablets, you don't need any fancy materials. All you'll need to follow along with, like, just my basic head tutorials and stuff that I usually do is a pencil and a paper. Now, I know a lot of people are asking me, like, oh, I, when they see me do a digital tutorial, like, last time I made one, they're like, oh, I can't really do that when I'm doing it on pencil and paper. But no, the fundamentals, the drawing, the structure, all of that remains the same. So I just want to clarify that you can do the same things and still follow the same instructions with nothing more than just a pencil and a paper. With that out of the way... Let's get started with the video. Today we'll be drawing Joseph Joestar from JoJo's Bizarre Adventures because I was requested this a while back and I thought it'd be fun to do as kind of a comeback video. Now I want to draw both old Joseph and young Joseph so I think I'll be making the video a two-part video. The first part is going to be just a drawing the same head tutorials like I usually do of young Joseph Joestar from part two. And shortly, at some point, I'll be uploading part two, which is gonna be old Joseph. And yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So let's start off with a circle, like I always do, just anywhere on the page, uh, wherever you want it. And once you put in the circle, we will be putting in the center line. So for this, uh, I'm gonna have the young Joseph looking kind of three quarters turned to the right, slightly angled downwards. So you're going to see, uh, I'm going to put the center line for the head <coughs> slightly to the right, right here. Of course, his left, our right. Now I curved it just a little because obviously your face actually has a bit of a curve to it. And that is why I curved it. After that, we'll be putting in the eye line. For the eye line, it's going to be like maybe a fourth of the way, half of the way down from the center of the circle here. So if you see, it's about that distance from where the center of the circle is. So I'm going to erase that line, which I made to divide the circle in half. And your eye line should end up right about here. Now, once we have this, this is where the tricky part comes in, because we have this sphere, and we have this center line for the face, and the eye line looking slightly down. To add in the um, jaw, the tricky part is, because it's turned three quarters, it's kind of a little bit weird, because it's looking that way. So what we're going to start is, at this corner, we're going to start by kind of following the line of the circle, and adding a, like, because that's where the eyes are going to be, and adding that line going kind of just a little bit down from the eye line, just like that. And then what we're going to do is, to add in the jaw, we're going to draw a slanted line, well, a straight line, angled slightly inwards going down, and then another line going closer towards the center line. Now here at the bottom, we can add in the chin, for which don't draw a line straight across horizontally like that, just have one angled slightly down because obviously the head of Joseph here is going to be tilted slightly lower. Now here when you draw another line to connect to the back of the head you don't want to connect it all the way to the back or too far forward. You want to connect it let's say about a fourth of the way down the side of the sphere. Once you have that draw another line connecting the bottom of the jaw to the sphere. And just like that we have the jaw shape of Joseph down. Now we can put in the ear right there and now a neat little trick for the ear is that it's usually going to end up where the bottom of the ear kind of goes to where the bottom of the nose is and the top of the ear goes to the top of the eye line here. 
So for example, if I were to add a nose here real quick, that's where the nose would be. And you can see how the ear size, obviously it's different from person to person. It sort of ends up the size of the nose, basically. Now, before we add in the eye, let's add in the nose first, because I feel like that'll help. So for the nose, we're gonna start right at the center point and draw a slanted line going inwards, right about there, connecting down back to the center line of the head. And once you do that, here we're going to add a, the bridge of the nose, for which just draw another line angled out from that center line, like that, stopping about where the, um, to the right side of the jaw, where it curves back in, where I just drew an arrow mark, right there. And then you draw another line curving back in to the center line. So you should have a nose that ends up right about there. Then you can add in the nostril, which is just a slight curve on the other side. And after that, the classic, um, Iraqi style for part two where you have the uh, the line parallel line to the nose bridge going across to kind of show the bridge of the nose and the little lines there it's just a stylistic choice that he does a lot now once you have that as you can see the bottom of the nose is where the ear ends up so that kind of shows you can use that to measure to see if you have your nose placed in the correct place now that we have the nose we can start by adding in the eyes so for the eyes What you're basically going to do is, you're going to want to, so for the eyes, what you're basically going to do is, from the center, you're going to want to draw a line coming out, and then another line going back across, kind of almost to the center of the circle, I mean to the edge of the circle, but not quite, and then draw another line, almost making a trapezoid shape at the top, coming back down. Once you do that, you draw like a semicircle, a curved shape, this is kind of the tricky part, because... I would highly recommend using reference for the eyes to kind of draw the eyes in Iraqi style. But if you try and do that, obviously the almond shapes, as I've talked about in previous videos and my how to draw eyes videos, with practice and looking at enough reference, it should become apparent. So once you have this eye shape, you can add in the eyebrow and we're pretty much gonna do the same thing for the other eye. And remember the almond shape, that's the same shape that's gonna be for this eye. So we draw that one line angled slightly down and then from there we draw another line kind of following the eye line that we originally made uh, horizontally sort of and then we draw the other slanted line going back down for kind of the end of the eyelashes coming down and at the bottom we add that other curved semicircular line almost connecting to the edge and after that you can add in the eyebrow for which I'm just gonna use two lines and Joseph has super thick eyebrows so kind of make this shape for the eyebrows once you have that down. Again, the eyes are a bit tricky and I would highly recommend using reference when drawing the eyes. <clears throat> and once I have this eyebrow in, I'm gonna add another line at the edge of it, uh, at the end near the nose bridge to kind of show the uh, furrowed brow that Joseph has. So he's gonna be looking, for now he looks kinda mad. <laughs> so once you have your eyes sort of looking like this, we can start putting, oh, almost forgot about the irises, adding the irises, for which it's just two circles. I'm gonna have this Joseph looking kind of straight at the camera-ish. So once you add in the irises and the pupils, you should have your eyes looking pretty decent. Now that we have the eyes down, we can move on to the mouth. I think I'm gonna give, uh, kind of based on the reference they're using, I'm gonna give this Joseph a slight grin on his mouth. And the mouth, like we've talked before, is going to sort of be halfway down from where the nose is down to the chin so here's where the bottom of the nose is and there's the chin about halfway maybe slightly above halfway like right there is where you're going to want to put in the mouth so for the mouth because i'm doing the slight grin i'm going to start from one end and go to the other end and a big thing to remember with the mouth to make it easier is especially in the jojo style make an m shape and make it a little bit more waning like you just saw there so take that m and just make it a little more slight, a little more subtle. So when you put it onto the page, it should look something like this. And that makes the lips look quite a bit more realistic. Like so. I think I'm going to be making that more of like a grin with some teeth showing. Instead of just keeping it the M like this. But that's basically how you make that shape. You just take like almost like a McDonald's M, but make it a lot more slight. And because we're looking at it from the three-fourths perspective, 
the right side of the lip is going to be more scrunched up and less long than the left side of the lip. And after that, you can add in the bottom lip by just adding a line across and kind of in the part two style for Joseph, for young Joseph, add in like these two almost vampire teeth like lines coming in. That's sort of the shadow underneath the jowls of Joseph's bottom lip right there. And you should end up with something like this. Then you can put in the neck where the back of the neck sort of comes in from behind the ear going down like that and the front of the neck comes in a little off from the center of the chin right there so you should once you put the neck in have something like this just like this it's looking much more and more like joseph joestar just gonna add a little bit of shadow and detail it for the um for the neck and remember don't forget about the adam's apple that he has and also the classic part two lines kind of the two lines coming off the bottom eyelash and then the line, the slanted line going across the chin. Those are the cheekbones. That's how Araki defined them in part two. And you'll see a lot of times in Araki style, he'll have lines sort of outlining where the cheekbones are. That's just something he does stylistically, and it's kind of cool. So now, the last thing we have to do to really make this look like Joseph Ujosta is add in the hair. So we're going to start off by adding the hairline. And as you can see here, for the hairline at the top of the hair, just let the hair kind of go straight across the sphere and have it come down to the side. And basically what we're going to be doing for the hair, I would, again, I highly recommend using reference for the hair, is about right there is the part of the hair. So that's where all of his big strands of hair are going to um, come out of. We're going to start by adding in the kind of bangs that he has in the front of the head. So you have uh, part of his hair sort of come from that line that I just drew, parting down, making the, again, kind of the speed racer McDonald shapes. And you have these weird flowy curvy lines, like triangles, but more curved shark fins, I guess you could call them. Not even. They are what they are. <laughs> but basically, you have all of these follicles, these hair, like clumps of hair, coming out from that center part of where the hair is. And just change up their sizes, change up the angles a little. I'd highly recommend using reference or just sort of following along with how I did it in the video. Obviously, I'm not trying to be exact because, you know, hair looks like hair. It's never going to always sit the same way unless you've literally hair sprayed it into place. But yeah, it's really a matter of just adding these um, kind of big clumps of triangular hair in that shape that you saw at the top where his hair kind of floofs out to one end and makes a weird long shape which you'll see as I add more and more of these um, these strands I uh, see I'm probably gonna speed through doing the hair a little so I'll see you after the time lapse one thing I want to talk about before I start the time lapse is um, right here you want to add volume to the hair so don't start the hair straight from where the circle is because that's kind of where the skull is. When you have hair, it actually starts like an inch above where your hairline is. So like when we add in our little follicles and our big clumps of hair, you don't want to do it straight up the circle. You want to kind of leave a little bit of space like I'm doing right here before adding in the actual clumps. And that just makes the hair look more volumetric and realistic because a big mistake that um, people make when drawing the hair is that they will um, draw it straight from the circle and it looks like almost your hair is coming right off the skull and there's no real volume to the hair. So from here, I will probably be switching into time lapse to speed this up a little, but really it's a matter of just adding these um, triangular shapes to um, shape all of the different parts of the hair. And right there where I drew the line is where the part of the hair is. That's important to keep in mind when you're drawing the shape. So yeah, I'll see you in a bit. Alright, so now that we kind of have the hair basically down here, we can start adding in sort of the neck area. I'm not going to do too much of the bust, but I do want to add his classic scarf in. So for the scarf, um, there's obviously many different ways to draw scarfs, and I would, again, I keep saying this a lot like a broken record, but highly recommend using uh, photo reference for how you want to draw your scarf. The way I'm going to do it is basically 
I'm going to make sort of two clumps, so make the staircase shape almost with the two zigzags and have a line sort of folding in towards the center of his neck where his collarbone would be and then connect it on the other side like this with two other curved lines. The big thing to remember when drawing scarves or any sort of clothing is how like they're folded on top of each other and really the rest of like adding folds and um, and shapes comes from practice. Maybe in the future at some point I'll do like a tutorial specifically on clothing folds. But for this one especially, I'm going to kind of keep it simple and just get the effect that there is a scarf there going. But once you have the scarf down like this, you should have a pretty good looking Joseph Joestar. Now I'm probably going to uh, clean it up, add in like the shading and the rendering in, um, in time lapse. So you'll see that right now. So once you sort of clean up all the guidelines, ink it, all that stuff, it should turn out looking pretty well like Joseph Joestar from part two, which is what I will do in time lapse. So I'll see you in a bit. Alright, so this is the final result. Um, as you could see while I was doing that, I sort of was kind of figuring out how I want to actually render it, because, again, usually I do my general cross-hatching style in black and white that I'd do if I was doing it on pencil, but I kind of wanted to do something a little different this time. And I don't know, I think it turned out looking a little different, but nonetheless, it looks nice. This is kind of where you should end up with Joestar. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned something. And I will be coming up with part two shortly with old Joseph. And yeah, other than that, leave a comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And if you have any other video recommendations or anything else that you'd like me to teach, I will be happy to oblige because I will try to make more videos in the future. With college and stuff, it'll be a bit hard, but I do genuinely want to keep doing this because I do genuinely enjoy making these videos and I enjoy teaching. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.